Hello and welcome to this new Construct 3 tutorial where we'll be making a logo quiz. So here you can see the end result, the logo which is asked actually. And we can drag around the different letters. You can see there here, you can drag them around. If they're not valid, they just drag back to the original place. And we can just do that. I'm not going to mention the answer here out loud like that and congratulations we can go to the next level and then we get the next um, question actually so pretty simple how does it work well uh, this is the main layout of the game it consists out of a number of layers the background layer is um, just the blue sprite that makes up the background and the question is the sprite up above containing the logos. And the answers layer contains all of the placeholders for the answers here. The sprite with the answer is actually just a single sprite where all of the animation frames are questions. Like that. Just a few questions in there. Um, when the level changes, another animation frame is shown. At the bottom, some placeholders can be found. The yellow ones are letter placeholders, and they contain an index instance variable to be able to identify them, um, and an occupied flag that denotes if it's occupied or not, of course. And they contain the letters that can be used to make up the answer. The red ones are the answer placeholders, which are uh, used to drag letters in. Uh, they are contain, you also contain an index to be able to identify them. Both placeholders are actually hidden when the game starts. On top of the answer placeholders, another visible placeholder will be spawned at runtime. It serves as an area where the user can drag a letter towards. The purplish area is the answer zone. This one here um, is the answer zone. Um, it used to detect if a user is dragged towards the answer or just dropping letters back uh, at the bottom here. And finally there is a dialog which is shown when the user completes the answer and the answers are loaded from a JSON file which is loaded at runtime. Let me see here how the JSON file looks like. Um, basically it's just questions, question 0, McDonald's, question 1, Nike, etc. So that's it. Um, let me see now, there is also a second layout called letters, here we have it. Um, the, here, uh, this layout just contains all of the letters that can be placed. They are grouped into a family called letters because they share a common behavior. If we go look at the letters family here. Um, the letters uh, have an instance variable called letter which holds the letter it represents and they also have an original x and y instance variable to keep track of where the letters originally come from. Um, it's also got three behaviors, the drag and drop to allow the user to drag the letters around, the bound to layouts so the letters stay nicely in the layout and move to behavior so the letters can automatically move back into their place when they are dropped somewhere. So that's it. So let's look at the code. The code is nicely divided up into three uh, sections. One for initialization, one for the base functionality, and one for the dialog. Initialization-wise, what we do is on start of layout, we make sure the dialog is hidden. And uh, we use the Ajax plugin to request the, the questions uh, project file and we wait, uh, we use the asynchronous functionality of Construct to wait for the file to load. And finally we just load the JSON into the questions dictionary. Um, and then we just check uh, if the item level already exists and um, we do that because uh, a user might already have unlocked a certain level of course uh, and it will result in either the on item uh, level exists or the item level missing when it exists we just get it uh, we store it and we set up the board and if it's missing we set the level to zero of course and we also set up the board set the board is a function you can see it here First, we stop the animation frame, uh, so the animation of the question sprite, and we just set the animation frame to the correct uh, frame uh, depending on the level. 
um, and then we uh, set up the board. So the setup board function does two things. At first, it creates the letter answer placeholders, just as many letter answers placeholders as there are letters in the answer. Uh, make sure that it's in the middle of the screen by calculating a start index of which uh, placeholder is to be the first one, as the first one to use actually. Uh, the second part is creating a draggable letters at the bottom. So if you look at start index here, that's how we do it. We uh, pick the length of uh, the question and if it's divisible by two, um, we make uh, start index number four and we uh, otherwise we make a start index number uh, five, or vice versa, uh, minus the length. So we pick the middle minus the length divided by two. So that's the way it works. Um, so then we loop through all of the letters of the answer, but start by uh, using the starting index. Um, the current index variable is initialized to zero uh, upon its definition, right here. So we loop through it, we pick the correct answer placeholder, depending on the loop index, and pick the correct answer placeholder if uh, if it's not, a, if it, we check if it's a space or not. And if it's not a space, we need to create a letter placeholder, answer placeholder, uh, at the uh, placeholders x and y coordinates. So what this does here is, let's see, uh, so there are so many placeholders here. We only need a letter placeholder if there is no space. So in this example, the third, uh, the third space here is a, as a space in the third placeholder is a space in the world, yeah, uh, rather, and then there does not need to be a placeholder. So that's what this does here. If it's different from the space, create a letter placeholder. Um, otherwise, just increase the current index and don't make one. That's what it does. Now, I get, um, now we get the answer from the dictionary and remove the spaces from it. So the answer is now uh, the entire string without the spaces. We use the replace function for that. Um, and if we do that, uh, we, we can just make the letters here. We do a letter loop uh, from zero to the length of the answer without the places, without the spaces rather. And then what we do is we do a while loop. And while we didn't find a place for all of the letters, we keep continuing. So we play, we pick a random placeholder, we check if it's occupied or not. Um, if it's not occupied, we set a uh, place found to one, and we set occupied uh, to one. And then we create um, the letter. Um, we create it by object, letter underscore, and then the letter of the answer on the layer answer on the correct placeholders. Um, so here we have while place found equals zero. Once we found this placeholder, then we go back to this while loop and we can go to the next uh, one. Well, why do we do that? Because uh, you can see here we pick a letter placeholder at random. Um, if we were to do that, if we were not to do the while loop, the possibility exists that it would put two letters on top of each other, and that's not what we want. So we want to keep on looping until we found an unoccupied letter placeholder, and that's what this does. And then for all of the other letter placeholders, we just uh, we loop through them. There are, are, there are 18, so from 0 to 17 we loop through them, and if it's not occupied, we just create a letter at random choose ABC etc that's what it does so so we wait for it to load you can see here of course you know what this logo is I'm gonna try and make it so these letters these four letters were placed in the while loop at this place, this place, this place, and this place, yeah, and all of the other letters were filled um, in the loop after that, looping through all of the 80 placeholders and checking if it's occupied or not, and then placing a random letter. That's actually what it did. So as far as base 
functionality is concerned, we have the drag and drop uh, behavior. So whenever uh, a drop, a letter is dropped, we check if we're over the answer zone. The answer zone is this area here. If we're overlapping the answer zone, we just pick the nearest letter, uh, the, the nearest uh, answer um, placeholder here. We pick it, um, and nearest to the letter we are dragging. Um, and if it's uh, occupied, we just move it back to the original X and Y position. If it's not occupied, we set the position to uh, the answer. Uh, we just snap it into place actually and we put the letter answers uh, uh, placeholders as occupied so we can check it the next time we try to drop something over it and we check if the puzzle is solved so um, if it's not over the answer zone what we do is just basically move it back to its place that's it and then there's the drag start um, if it's not overlapping the answer zone we uh, means that we're dragging from the bottom to the answer zone and then we just set the original x and y coordinates to be able to move it back afterwards if it's if it is overlapping the answer zone then actually we uh, are dragging from the answer down to the bottom and then we need to reset the occupied flag of so then we come to the most important function actually of the game which is the check puzzle solved function. So the check puzzle solved function starts from the premise that the puzzle will be solved. Um, and if it's not solved, if it finds an anomaly, it will be set to zero and the dialog will not be shown. So you can see here at the bottom, once it's solved, it shows the dialog, congratulations. So how do we do that? We pick the answer placeholders and we start by creating an answer variable, which is just the actual answer with the spaces stripped out of them. And then we just um, we, f we do for each loop for all of those answer placeholders an ascending order so we can check letter by letter from the start. Um, and then we check uh, if the puzzle is solved or not. Once the solved flag becomes zero, it will never become one again. So then it, we can just uh, ignore the loop and uh, just continue. But as long as that's not the case, we just keep on assuming that the puzzle is solved. Um, we pick the latter answer overlapping this placeholder and we check if it's visible. Uh, we pick the letter answer. Um, if it's not visible, there should not be a letter on top of it. So then we have a, a found uh, flag here. We set to zero. If uh, when, the, when the, we pick the letter that is attached to it, and mark the found flag. Uh, if the picking fails, it means that there is no letter and the found flag will remain zero. Um, and then we set the letter found to the uh, letter we have found actually. If we found something, we should check if it's the same letter and if it's not the same letter, then it's not solved. And if nothing is found and there should be something found, that's also not solved. And we just increase the index. Um, that's it. So once we found something that should not be there, or we found nothing where there should be a letter, it's just uh, determining that is not solved, and we don't show the dialog. And finally, there's the dialog functionality, where we just have a dialog logic group, which is activated and deactivated on show and hide dialog, and we just show and hide the dialog. Um, by uh, showing and hiding the layer. So that's it. Um, I hope you liked it. As always, please like and subscribe and I will leave a link to the template. Uh, you can pick it up in the Cirrus store. Thank you for watching.